Um, I never knew what the most rented movie was at Vulcan for a while there, at least at the North Store. It was I, The Big Lebowski, because college students. But um, I know just from, you know, just base searches, any day, any hour of the day, there was always a Wes Anderson movie and a, a Studio Ghibli movie checked out because they're very popular. And that's a, both of them are real four quadrant kind of hits. And so, you know, fun fact. Something a bit. Um, Brian and Kristen, uh, sometimes I would be very stubborn um, and opinionated and, uh, and, clash with Brian and Kristen sometimes, and Greg, Greg too. Um, and uh, sometimes I was right, sometimes I was wrong. Uh, more often than not wrong, especially in the early days. But, uh, you know, ultimately they were the managers and stuff and what they said went. And so I accepted it. And one time I remember uh, in our just in new to us section where stuff who had either just come to the store for the first time or had just hit disc or Blu-ray or yeah, disc. Um, <clears throat> Something that had, I remember one time uh, in our new to us or just in section of stuff that was new to the store for one way or another, uh, Criterion had just put out Watership Down. <clears throat> and so, <coughs> God damn it. Keep rolling. Um, <clears throat> God damn it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lars. Uh, I remember one time in our new to us or just in section stuff that was new to the store, Criterion had just put out Watership Down on DVD. And so we had uh, at the South Store back in the day, we had the new releases, new release TV. We had just in stuff. And then we had like just in. There was a, a section for like family friendly kind of stuff. Um, and we put Watership Down in the family friendly section. And I was like, Guys, Watership Down. It's a horrifying, traumatizing film. People always talk about it as such. There's bunnies and blood and screaming and death. Uh, I think we should move this to the general section. And they were very firm, like, no, it's, it's animated. It's, kid, you know, it's, it's ultimately a kid's so film. Like, no, put it in the family section. And um, I lost that fight. Uh, clearly, I still think I was right. But to their credit, I... we. I never heard of any complaints about it, so no one ever ran a water screw down and, you know, said that my child won't speak to me and is just staring at the wall all day. So I think it worked out okay. One time that didn't work out okay, I was talking to a mother and a youngish son, younger than 12, probably 7 to 11, um, and we were talking about movies, and for some reason, uh, Robocop came up. And I said, well, you know what actually is kind of... An, entertaining for a kid and it's just pg-13 is robocop 3 uh you know because there's like it's you know, a little bit more childish and there's you know flying robocop flies and there's or robotic samurais and stuff uh and i like it uh but obviously not robocop 2 but robocop 3 and i get a call from brian a few days later saying did you recommend robocop 2 to a mom and her and her son I was like no no robocop 3 did they write robocop 2 and indeed they had, and I was, it was, I was very embarrassed that they had misheard me, um, because Robocop 2 is awful for children. Um, but, uh, so I was like, hey, you know, exercise judging, it was a learning experience. And now, you know, and I knew, um, <clears throat> and I'd always be very, I'd always be, be very aware and sure in future times to, when talking to parents and kids, like, okay, how how old are they? What can they handle and stuff? You know, because MPAA ratings is, it's a guide more than anything and stuff. And especially like, oh, you know, Beetlejuice is rated PG, but there's an F-bomb in it. In it. Uh, airplane rated PG. There's naked breasts in it. Uh, anything, you know, PG and G before 1984 and even, you know, Gremlins and stuff. Like there's, you know, some traumatic things and stuff. And, you know, just, just an overall kind of guide and um, IMDb's parental guidance, uh, uh, was really helpful in there because some people, some you know, people would come in and say like, "Oh, or is there any kind of like shits or dams or stuff?" Like, I don't want, <clears throat> I don't want any kind of swearing uh, for my children, or um, 
you know, the, your parents are like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't care about violence or stuff. Like, you know, is it, is it like, how is it, is it handled childishly? Is, is it, a, is it adult themed? Is there nudity and stuff? And so it was always, that was more interesting than anything just to see, especially in a town like Austin, um, different parents come in and, you know, some, some kids were uh, eight or nine and uh, were renting some great fucking stuff. Uh, there were, there were one or two kids over the years where, um, you know, had we, had we stayed open, I'm sure by the, when they, when they hit 18, they would be applying for a job at Vulcan and they probably would have gotten it cause they were writing great things. Um, and then there were, you know, there were some kids, uh, whose parents were, you know, really overly cautious and stuff. And, you know, they were very clear about like, oh, here's what I don't want in things and, uh, you know, I would be as frank and, uh, you know, informative as possible and, you know, steer them away and stuff. And, you know, that's a, <laughs> it's a cool thing about living in a, in a progressive urban environment of, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different tastes and just in general seeing, we, we, we tried, especially under Kristen and Brian to be very, uh, family centric and stuff and have a lot of things, animated stuff and family friendly things and stuff that isn't just the. <clears throat> we tried to make sure not to, to have things that isn't aren't just like the gore and the cult and the horror stuff you know have a wide variety of things and for a time there that wasn't the case unfortunately um, but I think that was our real strength of you know the, to see families and parents and kids bond over stuff that the parents would watch when they were young or you know kids slowly develop their taste over the years uh, and just kind of had this, you know, visual history and, you know, the best thing about going to a video store, sort of seeing titles, uh, you know, they're browsing and stuff that you would never hear of or had heard of before and asking people, hey, you know, <coughs> hey, we like Hocus Pocus, we like Halloween Town, what else can we watch for, uh, for this Halloween that my kids would enjoy? And I could say something like, oh, have you ever seen The Halloween Tree or Kenny and Company? Or if your kids don't mind a guy getting shot in the face, Lady in White or something. Um, so that was always really nice to um, to be able to, to, you know, to be able to provide that learning experience for everyone. There was one time, God damn it. You don't see my leg, do you? When I cross my legs like that? No. Okay, yeah. Uh, there was one time, and I don't mean to throw this couple under the bus, but there was a uh, kind of a nerdy, you know, couple with a kid, you know, like kind of glasses wearing, they might be giants, um, pop culture, people with whom I could identify. And they came in one time, they were looking for a mystery science theater 3000 stuff. And... They said, oh, you know, do you have this episode? Do you have this episode? I said, oh, yeah, we do. We do. That one's not on DVD yet, right? Sandy Frank. Um, and they said, do you have the episode that they did uh, where they did Nia the Lepus? Or Nia the Lepus, depending on the pronunciation. And I said, uh, no, we don't. Uh, I don't believe they did that episode. Knowing full well that I know they did not do that episode. They're like, oh no, yeah, they did it. Like, it only aired once. It was a rare one and stuff. And I could be like, oh well, no, we don't have it. And like, we had a computer right there and stuff. And I said, you know, can you tell me about? It? Let's look it up, kind of thing. Um, and they, you know, they didn't. But you know, they didn't, you know, have any show any proof or something. But they stuck to their guns. Um, and they brought it up, you know, at least one other time. And. Um, you know, I know they didn't, and I, I've met some of the members of MST3K, and I remember asking Traceable, you and Frank Conniff, like, hey, did you guys ever do Night of the Lepus? And they said, no, no, we definitely didn't. Um, I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I found out Rift Tracks did, did it, like, in 2013, 2014. And I even said, like, hey, was this what you were thinking about, that when Rift Tracks did? And they said, no, no, it was definitely, like, Joel or, or something. And I was like, no, that was not an episode. But... You know, uh, or when I was first hired, Kristen said, you know, 
here, not, you know, not in a rude or in a negative way, but the customer isn't always right here at Wolfen Video. And it's not that, you know, we're going to, you know, be assholes or anything, but sometimes people don't remember stuff or they're not sure or they can't remember things or, you know, they think that they know more about how late fees or when they return something and stuff. And, um, you know, again, <coughs> God damn it. <coughs> I can feel my throat getting dry. Um, and it wasn't the kind of thing where, you know, we, again, we wouldn't be jerks or something, but you know, you had to remember you had, it was, you know, you trusted, uh, the computer, you trusted the notes that your coworkers would leave. You trusted your coworkers and stuff. And we tried really hard. We're, you know, people rarely would not be jerks and would not be, you know, argumentative or, or stuff. Um, but we would try to be firm when they were and, um, you know, talk them through stuff or help them out or say, like, I think the movie you're thinking of is this or that was, oh, it happened just recently. Uh, yeah, there was, uh, someone was like, oh, that was directed by such and such. I said, no, it was not. That was, uh, Lindsay Anderson or something. Um, and, um, they're like, oh, are you sure? And we would go, oh yeah, it was the Joy Luck Club. This, uh, this woman was, uh, sure that Ang Lee had directed the Joy Luck Club. I was like, mm, I don't think so. Let's go to the Ang Lee section. And then let's go to drama. Here's the Joy Luck Club. It was not directed by him. Um, at the same time, though, I was <laughs> wrong a number of times and got my ass handed to me. Uh, I was recently, I was talking to a friend. We were talking about um, Joel Schumacher's The Fan of the Opera, and I got the year wrong, and he took me to task for it. Or the, the worst that I felt that I can remember is before it had come out on DVD, it was only on VHS at the time, a customer had called up asking about Oliver Stone's seizure uh, with Hervé Villachez. And I'd never heard about it. And at the time at the North Store, um, we couldn't, we didn't have internet on our computer. It was very slow. So I was like, I don't think, he told me the year. And I was like, I don't think Oliver Stone was making movies at that time. Like I was like, no, no, no. Um, and I was like, well, we don't have it. I'm sorry. And he, you know, he was frustrated with me and hung up. Uh, and I was dead fucking wrong because I'd never heard about it. And eventually we did get it. It did hit DVD. And I remember feeling real bad, like, oh, I wish I had, um, <clears throat> I wish I had not assumed that I knew more than I did, which was a problem that I, I had uh, earlier in my life. And I really kind of, uh, grew out of it over the course of my time at Vulcan, but also um, the more stuff that I knew I did know, I, I became more resolute and confident in. Um, but more often than not, it's just like, oh, you know what? Let's go to the computer. Let's go to IMDb. Let's look this up. You know, but we, there's no point in us talking and arguing about it. You know, we can we can get to the bottom of this. There is the information outside, or we can walk over to the section. Let's cut.